Today, we're redesigning the marketing website for freelancer.com. Now, those of you out there that have freelanced in the past will know that these online platforms for work exist, and some of them are great, some of them are not. And Freelancer is one of those that uh, tends to be good for clients, but not so much for talent. And we're going to change that today, at least in the way the site presents itself online. Uh, so we're going to take their existing UI, which has a lot of text, lots of uh, white space that isn't really accomplishing much. And we're going to shape it up into something much more clear and easy to consume. And the hypothesis is that if we do this, companies like Freelancer would get more people signing up, both on the client and the talent side. Uh, so as always, here's our style guide. We've taken this directly from their website. And we're going to be changing up the font from basic boring Roboto to a typeface called Metropolis for the header and Freight Sans Pro for the body. So it gives it a nice little modern feel that's a little more friendly than Roboto. Here are the stories, everything I'd want to achieve in a website like this. Now, obviously with marketing design, uh, you kind of always have the underlying sense that uh, my goal as a user is to figure out whether or not this is an appropriate service or product for me, and then subsequently move through the sales funnel. So that underpins all of it. Um, but when you break it down specifically for this offering, these are the things that you kind of have to uh, have answered before you're gonna move to that next step. So let's go ahead and get into it and see what we come up with. The first thing we're doing here is fixing the visual hierarchy in the header navigation. On the existing site, for some reason, there were two navigations, a primary one and a secondary one, uh, with the secondary one performing really no discernible purpose. So we're taking them both, combining them into one, and then making sure that attention flows through the navigation the way we'd expect it um, using an appropriate layout schema. That little vertical bar separating the main controls from the navigation controls. Now, as with most marketing websites, the most important piece of text is the primary header in the hero section on their homepage. This has to help people understand clearly what they do and how they're different from the competition. So here, we're just cutting straight to the point and we're saying, hire the best freelancers on the internet. Now, I know that freelancer.com doesn't have all the best freelancers on the internet, but in this imaginary world where everything's perfect and happy, this is a kind of value proposition I think would really work for a site like Freelancer. Now I end up spending the majority of the time in this redesign focusing on this hero element and it's because again it's just so important. This is the first impression that people are getting of a particular brand's website. Uh, usually from a completely cold background. They don't have any context. So I want to take this time to kind of help people feel a little more related to the people behind the brand by featuring a freelancer with a little mock conversation happening. Frankly, it really felt like the talent for some reason was being left out of the entire conversation despite this being a platform for freelancers. Uh, so emphasizing the, that a little bit more because it just kind of makes sense and helps build that personal connection with the person behind the screen. Next up, we're including a simple little brand carousel just below the hero to hit users with a little bit of familiarity uh, before moving through the rest of the site. Um, this is a common pattern that's used throughout the industry. It works quite well for building trust. Here I wanted to emphasize the talent a little bit more and just kind of underscore the idea that there are lots and lots of freelancers on the platform. Uh, so that would kind of send a signal to the potential client, hey, I can probably find someone here um, on freelancer.com. 
Uh, so we're adding a little dedicated section here with uh, infinite scrolling carousel, uh, just showcasing all the talent. Now, in retrospect, I did put this section in the wrong place. We do fix this a little bit later, um, but I do think that a section like this was sadly missing from the homepage. Now, if you'll remember from the list of stories, there was one story that specified that potential clients might want to have some idea of how much they should expect to pay when using a service like Freelancer. And given that I've done a lot of this on the provider side, I know that pricing varies wildly. So instead of giving them some kind of calculator or a range, we just want to give them a series of recent projects that were completed on the platform and then some idea of how long it took them and how much they paid. That way they can kind of get a feel for uh, what they're expecting to pay moving forward uh, through the sales funnel here. There's a lot less hesitation if I know uh, I can afford what comes out the other end. And of course, a site like Freelancer offers a whole bunch of services. So letting users select which ones they want to view makes a lot of sense here as well. Initially, I wanted to help potential clients understand what the process would look like um, on a site like Freelancer, but then I kind of took a step back and remembered that most people that are in the position to hire a freelancer for something kind of have some rough idea as to how it's going to work, right? You have to find someone, give them a brief, pay for it, and then ultimately receive the result. Um, so instead, we want to help them understand something else that might be a little less clear, and that's what kind of services do we offer on freelancer.com? And in order to do that, we're again going to default to using existing project categories and the most common ones will be displayed first with the number of designers or developers that work on that particular type of uh, project displayed as well uh, with the ability to dig a little deeper into that particular category and maybe browse more designers or developers and then pick one from there. And of course, what better way to bolster trust with potential clients uh, than words from previous clients, right? I mean, if I knew a handful of people that had projects similar to mine go very well and I can actually see their eyeballs in a picture, another human being, I'm much more likely to move to the next step in the, in the sales funnel. So I'm a big fan of these very large uh, images of people with quotes. I feel like that's more appropriate for long form testimonials. Uh, so we're going to build something like that out here and then uh, finish things up with the footer. And there we go. I feel like this is a significant step forward. It's much more bright and interesting and kind of makes me feel happy to look at. Uh, but specifically, the value proposition is much more clear. There's a much more specific focus on the individual talent members themselves. Uh, we're keeping a lot of the patterns that they had on the existing site to build trust, uh, but we're also simplifying things by saying, hey, here's what a typical project looks like. Uh, here's what our talent pool looks like. Um, here are our actual recent projects that have been completed on the platform with their associated duration and payment. And then of course, we hit them with some testimonials at the bottom of the page there. So all things considered, I think this is a significant leap forward, but what do you think? Let me know in the comments. And if you have any design you'd like to see me add some polish to, feel free to throw a comment down there as well. Hope you enjoyed this one and have a great week. Bye.